Hi, and welcome to Missouri Outdoors. I'm Kip Woods. We're in South Central Missouri, where on today's show, we're going to take you on a tour of some of the most interesting and scenic places found in the Show Me State. And they're all located right here in Shannon County, near Eminence. From springs to caves to scenic valleys, we'll show you what you can see and how to get there. Then, take to the hills to explore nature a different way. We'll also see how designs in nature influence the world around us. Put your thinking caps on, we'll have a new conservation quiz. And Dennis Vig has some valuable tips on identifying mushrooms. But first, it's time to check your nature knowledge with Ralph Duran. Some birds spend all year round in Missouri, and some migrate, coming here to breed and spending the winter in the tropics. This is the call of one common summer resident. Is that an indigo bunting, a chipping sparrow, a brown-headed cowbird, or an eastern bluebird? Listen again. That's the call of the chipping sparrow, a small brown bird with a rusty-colored cap. The landscape of Shannon County has some of the most outstanding features found in Missouri. Some of these natural gems are easily accessible and have been popular spots for years. Others are remote, hidden among the hills and trees, and can only be located on foot. The area surrounding Eminence has a mixture of rugged hills and hollows, bluffs and caves, and crystal clear waters. The main arteries are two waterways that cut through the heart of the area. Favorites for fishing and floating are the Jack's Fork and Current Rivers. These two rivers come together about seven miles east of town. Not far from this confluence is one of Missouri's hidden treasures. Prairie Hollow Gorge natural area is rugged and breathtaking. The gorge itself is some 300 feet deep from its highest point to its lowest. The cliff walls have vertical drops of 100 feet. The surrounding forest is very rocky with many large boulders and rock ledges. The gorge was created years and years ago as this stream began its down cutting into the rock and gravel of the area and eroding the surface of the land. About 15 miles east-southeast of Eminence is Rocky Falls. This spectacular waterfall along Rocky Creek is part of Stegall Mountain Natural Area. The area has been a popular swimming hole for local residents. Just a short distance downstream is Mill Mountain Natural Area. Despite its natural beauty, the area's remote setting has resulted in light public usage, mostly by hikers using the Ozark Trail. The area is named for a grist mill which once operated here. The remains of the mill can still be found today. Not all the beauty of this region is found above ground. Powder Mill Cave is located east of town near the current river along Highway 106. A gate at the entrance protects endangered bats from human disturbance. While exploration of the cave is not allowed, a recent journey by a specialized cave mapping crew provides a glimpse of some of the cave's beauty. East of Eminence, off Highway 106, is the Blue Spring Natural Area. This is what the Osage Indians called the Spring of the Summer Sky. Blue Spring is the deepest spring in Missouri, reaching a depth of over 300 feet. It's also one of the largest in the state, 
with an average daily flow of 90 million gallons. The spring gets its blue color as wavelengths of light are both absorbed and reflected by the deep, clear water. The cool spring water has a constant temperature of 57 degrees. Just west of Eminence is another popular site, Alley Spring. The mill here was built in 1894. Originally used to grind wheat, it was later expanded to include corn grinding, a sawmill, and an electrical generator for the community. The mill closed in 1918. There are many other natural gems waiting to be explored, all located in Shannon County, in Eminence's backyard. I love wild mushrooms. I eat them fried, stuffed, in pasta, on pizza. But I always play it smart and only eat the mushrooms I know are safe. Some of Missouri's wild mushrooms are edible. Some can make you sick and some can kill you. One reason Morel mushrooms are so popular, besides being delicious, is that they are easily identified. No other mushroom looks like a Morel. But most other varieties aren't that easy, so here are a few tips on picking a safe mushroom. Take notes. Did you find the mushroom growing on wood, soil, or moss, alone or in a cluster? Write down the color of the cap, gills, and stem. Then collect the entire mushroom, including the base, and wrap each type separately in wax paper along with your notes. When you get home, before you cook it up, look it up. These jelly mushrooms are often used in salads. On the other hand, this variety is called devil's urns. You'd probably avoid it just because of the name, and you'd be right. And a parasol-shaped mushroom with white gills means real trouble. Amanitas vary in shape and color and contain one of the deadliest poisons found in nature. So don't eat a mushroom you can't positively identify. When in doubt, throw it out. If you'd like more information on wild mushrooms, just write to us. We'll have the address for you at the end of the show. Mountain biking gets you outside. It, in a short period of time, lets you experience the woods. It's quiet, and, and that's one of the beautiful things about it. You're, when you move through the woods, you can experience nature without really disrupting it. You see deer on a regular basis. You pass turkey. It's a great experience. And that was great. Oh yeah, what a day. Let's check this uh, other part of the trail out. Absolutely. There's a new way to experience Missouri's outdoors. The mountain bike. When you start out, of course, you're mostly interested in just getting those wheels to point straight. And uh, as you progress through the, the difficulty of trails, uh, you get to a point where, um, where it is. It's just instant reaction. It's super exciting. Uh, something comes up, you react to it. You're dropping through the woods, down a hill, uh, here's a root, there's a rock, there's a limb, and uh, your body just uh, reacts instantaneously. It's a fantastic experience. The intensity of a high-performance mountain bike on a narrow and rocky trail is not the only biking experience Missouri has to offer. The development of the Katy Trail and other bike paths has led to a resurgence of bicycling throughout the state. As Carl Thomas of the mid-Missouri town of Hartsburg exhibits, the benefits of cycling are not only reserved for the younger generation. I took up bicycle when I was about 73, and I've been uh, purchased me a bicycle, and uh, I've been riding the trail for exercise, and, and enjoy the evening breeze and uh, and the scenery, and and then uh, you meet a lot of people. I had rode the bicycle some when I was in service, and and then I just picked it up again, and uh, it uh, it took a little practice. I'm still not very real sharp on, but I get around pretty good. Years ago, when a person got uh, around 70, well, they thought that was terrible old, but uh, since I've been that age, I, I, I still got a lot to go, I hope. One of the great things about cycling is that you can do it at any level, and, and virtually anyone can do it. There seems to be uh, a range of different riding possibilities, and Missouri is wonderful for the opportunities that it provides, uh, whether it's just uh, flat forest roads, Katy Trail, or some, uh, some really challenging routes and rocks and uh, the wonderful uh, twisted single track of uh, southern Missouri. I mean, we really have it all.
This new interest in bicycling presents a challenge for land managers. Tim French is a forestry regional supervisor with the Missouri Department of Conservation. Uh, the department is certainly aware of uh, the interest in, in uh, mountain biking on department areas and we are certainly looking for ways to accommodate uh, area users of all types. We are in the process now of developing trail standards for a number of different trail types and our, our aim is of course to manage the resources of the of uh, the state as best we can and to provide for uh, an enjoyable experience from a lot of different outdoor users. Uh, this could be equestrian users, uh, bicyclists, hunters, hikers, walkers. Um, when they all use the same trail, uh, there's always a potential for conflict and it requires everybody to have respect for each other and their uh, use of the trail. Packing out what you take in, not riding on wet trails, riding in small groups, there are a number of things cyclists can do to lessen their impact on the environment. As our trails become more popular, all trail users will need to be more mindful of their impact on other users and on the trails themselves. Cyclists should always be aware that they have uh, some, some responsibilities. And their responsibilities are not only to the other trail users, because uh, Cyclists uh, should always remember, of course, to yield the right of way to other trail users, but they also have um, a broader um, responsibility to the trail itself. You always have to be mindful that, that you don't want to tear up that trail. You've got to leave it for the next person. And when you're using it, remember that other people are too. Take off your hiking boots and check your tackle box at the door. It's time to come inside and play the game that's got everybody in an outdoor state of mind. Conservation Quiz! That's right, Conservation Quiz. The game you can play at home that tests your knowledge on a variety of topics relating to Missouri's great outdoors. Let's begin. The first category, Bloomin' Beauty. Its showy blossoms dominate the edges of forests. Do you know what the state tree of Missouri is? Is it A, a hawthorn, B, redbud, C, flowering dogwood, or D, cottonwood? The answer is... C. In a typical year in Missouri, we can enjoy the peak of flowering dogwoods in mid-April. The true flower is actually the tiny green and yellow center, while the broad white petals are really a type of leaf that help advertise the flower's presence to bees and other pollinators. The next category, springs abound. There are over 2,000 natural springs in Missouri. Which one has the most water flowing from it? Is it A, Blue Spring near Eminence, B, Alley Spring near Eminence, C, Big Spring near Van Buren, or D, Bennett Spring near Lebanon. C is correct. The largest is Big Spring near Van Buren, where an average of 275 million gallons of water flows from it each day. Next category on the big board, Fish ID. It's one of the largest fish in the state. They are also long-lived and can survive more than 20 years. Can you name it? The answer is paddlefish. Also nicknamed spoonbills because of their large paddle-shaped snouts, they can grow longer than 5 feet and weigh more than 60 pounds. The category, Danger Ahead. The question, which of the following are poisonous and harmful to humans? A. Hellbender B. Walking Stick C. Daddy Long Leg D. All of the above or E. None of the above If you said E, you're right! They may look scary, but believe it or not, they're all harmless. Looks really can be deceiving. And the final category for today, Color Me Blue. Can you name the state bird of Missouri? Is it A, blue-winged teal, B, great blue heron, C, 
Blue Jay, or D, Eastern Bluebird. The correct answer is D. The bluebird is one of the most welcome residents among Missouri's birds. Its bright colors and cheerful song make it a favorite with almost everyone. In addition, it is a highly beneficial bird. About two-thirds of its diet is insects, many of which are damaging to crops. That's all the time we have for today. No matter how you did, everybody wins playing Conservation Quiz. Because the more you understand, the more you can enjoy. Conservation Quiz is brought to you by the Missouri-Mississippi Flyway. Serving waterfall for as long as anyone can remember. And the Missouri Department of Conservation. Keeping you informed about Missouri's outdoors for over half a century. I'm Jim Sinclair saying thanks for playing Conservation Quiz and have a safe and happy outdoors experience. Conservation Quiz is an MDC production. The Kids Club was created for um, kids to really learn a little bit more about conservation and a casual environment. We have over 5,000 kids. And the reason we have so many is because we have this type of rock. This rock that's all around us, this is called dolomite. And it's a form of limestone. And this rock can actually be dissolved away by rainwater. We get together once a month and just enjoy nature together and go over different topics. The age group is from 6 to 13. And our focus is to really introduce them to nature in a little bit more depth. Spider, spider, we got a spider. Where's, where's, our, where's our cage? We want to introduce them to spiders as a beneficial animal in the ecosystem, that it helps to control insect populations and it helps to be a part of the whole food chain. So we want them not to be afraid of them, have a healthy respect for the two venomous spiders that we have, but to um, know that they're okay to have around. Oh, those are neat. Aren't those cool, guys? Now, those are pretty small. Do you think they can eat big insects? No. What do they have to eat? Uh, little tiny little pieces. that's right little yes, tiny probably. for a lot of them it's the first time thing um, just watching them touch a snake for the first time or um, get a chance to see a spider up close or even see a bat up close you can tell by their faces they've never seen something like that or that close and really had the chance to experience it up close this bag could probably eat about 2,000 mosquitoes in one night so they're great natural predators against insects we gear it so that the kids that come back and build upon the different topics that we have and so they learn um, more and more about conservation each time and we try to just go in a little bit more depth than maybe they might get in school or in other activities. No matter when I come in here, this deposit is doing the same exact thing day after day. And even if it's raining outside or if it's really dry outside, this water coming down through here comes down at almost the exact same rate every day. The kids really love it and we begin to build relationships over time too because it's been going for about two years now and the kids continue to come back and we begin to get to know each other a little bit. Turn your lights out and let's see what total darkness is like. What about your lights? I'm going to turn them off in one second, okay? Whoa! Can you turn lights on? We sure can. And you know we got to take good care of that little blue ball cause it's the only home we'll ever know. See, in the Middle Ages, that's how people got the news, was from people that would go around and sing songs about the stories. Did you ever notice that old Big Dipper? I wonder what he dips all night. Well, I used to be a teacher, and now I have a, a wonderful opportunity to go to schools and speak to the public and explain this whole process of composting and recycling and how it all fits together and why it's such a wonderful idea. It's really easy. I mean, two liter bottles in the classroom, compost piles in the schoolyard, very simple and, and easy ways to do this. It doesn't take much work. It's, it's going to happen. Compost happens. It just takes a little bit of time. He's an environmental entertainer and he does an excellent job of uh, bringing information about recycling and things that are important to our environment. And we wanted that message to be brought to the kids in an interesting, entertaining way. The out of doors is a very popular thing with kids and 
they're Discovery Channel kids, I'll tell you that. Sometimes they know a lot more than we do about nature and it's, it's challenging for me to even present some materials to them because they're so well versed in a lot of the uh, stuff about the environment. Habitat, 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 have to have a habitat, 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 have to have a habitat, have to have a habitat to carry on, yeah. Nature is the great teacher for all artists. You have to observe what you can find uh, available in nature in order to replicate it two-dimensionally on a piece of paper. Everything that you want in your paintings is available in nature. There are no colors that can't be found in nature. Color is the emotional component in nature. It makes us feel and respond to what we see. I am in constant awe of the world around us. Well, I think that all of architecture begins with nature. In fact, what we have here on Earth is the built environment and the natural environment. And the more the built environment is informed by the natural environment and respects it, the better off we all are. Trees, which are able to sway in the wind and have this wonderful sense of structure and not just break in half when, when the wind blows, have this capability because of the fact there's so much water in them, so that the hydraulics of a tree become a, an interesting concept. And I believe that this notion of how nature deals with forces is, is very important to architecture. Nature all, almost always does things in a very, very efficient way. Buildings are not necessarily always that efficient. So I think there's a lot we can learn from nature. The sense of touch has to have movement in order to work. If you lay your hand on a pine uh, cone or a, a sprig of pine like this, you probably won't know what it is. It's the act of moving the hands that tells you. I observe, of course, the thickness of the rock, the weight of the rock by touching it. Smoother on this side than on this one. Sharp on the edge and sort of sloping off to the sides in terms of thickness. is a primary way of observing the world. Uh, it's a way to read, it's a way to perceive in ways that I can conceptualize. It's a way beyond words to understand uh, where I live.
Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, if you get the chance, why not head out and enjoy Missouri's outdoors? That's where I'll be. See you next time. Experience a historical journey to Shannon County with the Voices of the Hills audio cassette. Enjoy the music and entertaining tale of a region rich in nature and culture. Well, I wonder how the old folks are at home. Purchase your own copy today. It's available at your local Missouri Department of Conservation office or nature center. You can also get information about other conservation publications and videos, including the Best of Missouri Outdoors and Just Kidding Around video series. To receive a copy of today's handy hint, send us your name and address and the specific name of the hint. And check out the latest in conservation information on our website.